Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. In this video, we are going to be talking about how important is it to have a specific stack when you are learning to code. So in reality, your first stack, your first programming language, when you are learning to code, it doesn't really matter. Right? It doesn't really matter what it is, right? You can learn with uh, Python, you can learn with JavaScript, you can learn with uh, Ruby, you can learn with PHP, you can learn with any language that you want. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Because what you're doing is learning the fundamentals of basically uh, programming and computer science, okay? That's what you're doing, right? Once you learn the fundamentals, then shit. You're good to go you can move on and start working on the other things that you want to work on like personal projects uh, you know projects that will show off your skills when you go into a job interview now you do have to understand the difference between your first programming language your first stack that you're learning and the stack that's gonna get you a job or the programming language that's gonna get you a job. You have to understand the difference, right? Because to learn how to code and learn how to program, you can do it with any programming language. It doesn't really matter. Once you learn those fundamentals, you're good to go. But when you are preparing yourself to go into the job market and you're going out here uh, to these companies, you wanna make yourself a more attractive candidate by having the skills that they need. Most companies have certain requirements and certain standards that they say, you know what, this is what we're looking for right now. This is the type of things that we need, okay? And the last thing that you wanna do is look like a beginner, right? Look like a beginner because you might not have the skills, you might not even uh, have done the research, right? And, and showed up to a job interview and been like, hey man, I wanna, get hired for this position and I'm a beginner, I'm a junior developer, never worked anywhere, but I want you to give me a chance. Now, my advice for you guys is to never show up to a job interview with that attitude of just give me a chance because I'm, I'm new and I'm super excited to get into the industry, etc. Like, Bro, that works only so much, okay? Everybody's excited to get into the industry. Everybody wants to go in and work as a developer but if you go in with the right skills that they need then yeah you're gonna get hired okay so I'll give you guys a perfect example let's say you are a junior developer and you showing up to a company which might be a digital agency it could be uh, some type of company that needs you to do something like WordPress right and you show up there and what you have in your resume is, hey, I have static site generators, or hey, I have, uh, you know, I don't know, freaking <laughs> Vue.js uh, and, and Nuxt, <laughs> right? You show up with that, right? But you have zero experience with PHP, you have zero experience with uh, working with a CMS, you have zero experience of uh, content editing, right, or content management, you have zero experience of working in a team, right, it doesn't really show that you have the skills to work at that position. Now, if a company does hire you, they're hiring you for basically to give you an opportunity and because they kind of see potential in you, but at the same time, if there's a guy showing up there to that same job interview and he shows up with WordPress, right? And he shows up, hey, I work with this CMS. Hey, I work for this company doing this and that. Or even if they've never worked anywhere, but at least they have the same skills that they're looking for, right? They have the same tools that they're looking for. What you think is gonna happen, right? Like. <laughs> It ain't no secret, bro. He's going to get the job over you, right? Same thing if you show up to a company and they're doing something like, I don't know. Uh, let's say, for example, they're using Angular and they're using, you know, C Sharp, right? And you show up there and at the end of the day, you have zero experience with that. You don't even know what that is. You're like, oh, 
I kind of heard of Angular, right? And then what's going to happen is that another guy's going to show up there and he's going to have at least one or two projects with Angular. And then that's a, a moment when you'll be like, okay, who should I pick? The guy that has potential, right? And both of them have potential. None of them have experience. Who should I pick? Should I pick the guy who has at least a couple of projects in Angular? Or should I pick the guy that has, you know, potential, right? Like, yeah, he knows programming, but that's about it, right? So in that situation, you know, you already know what's going to happen. <laughs> Most likely, you ain't getting that job, bro. That's just how it is, okay? And that's fine. That's fine. Sometimes, you know, not every single uh, position you're going to be able to get. That's just how life is. That's how life goes. But what you want to do is you want to make yourself a more attractive candidate is why I always tell you guys to do research in your local area and find out exactly what is it that they're looking for so for example if I say hey man I want to get a job in the next month what exactly is it that I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on a specific industry okay and I'm going to make my portfolio cater to that industry if it's a digital agency, I'm going to look up the things that digital agencies are looking for. If it's a software company, right, I'm going to look for the type of skills that the software companies in my local area are looking for, okay? If I'm over here trying to get into a job for a software as a service type company, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and look into that. Right? They might be using something like PHP Laravel, they might be using like C Sharp, they might be using Node.js, etc. Whatever it might be. But I'm gonna cater my portfolio to that industry. And that's something that most people need to learn. Apologies, programming languages, etc. You're using when you're trying to get a job. And I will say yes. Okay, that does matter. You know, a lot of people will say Listen, man, you just got to prepare yourself, you know, have a solid portfolio. It doesn't matter what language it is. doesn't matter what frameworks you're using, right? And I'll be honest, it does matter when you go into this job interviews, which stack, which languages you have, which type of projects you have, because there's only so many companies out there that hire people of potential. Okay, the majority of companies are small to medium sized businesses that they don't hire off potential, they hire off results. So, if they look at your portfolio and they look at what you have done, can determine if you're gonna be an asset to the company or a liability, then most likely you're not gonna get the job. So, again, my advice is. Hey, learn with whatever language you want to learn, then go ahead and start making your portfolio cater to a specific industry so you can get a job. All right, guys. So that's just a quick advice from your boy, Joe, over here, man. Uh, anyways, man, you already know it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Your boy is back and out and did it again one more time. All right. Hopefully you guys like this type of videos. Leave a like, leave a comment, show me some love. You know, show me some love. Let me know what you think about the type of content that we're creating here. And let me know if you like the style of just us driving around Florida, showing you guys a couple of the different uh, areas here in good old Florida. All right. Let me know.